Hey, this is Molly. Before I introduce you to today's guest, I'm thrilled to tell you about an unbelievable event on May 5th that I am super excited to be a part of. Broadcast live from Atlanta to 100,000 people around the globe, LeaderCast Live is the largest one-day leadership event in the world. Join me and an incredible lineup, Tyler Perry, Andy Stanley, Daniel Pink, and Susie Welch, just to name a few. Again, it's on May 5th, and it's a day of leadership development. To learn more about how you and your team can attend or host a live simulcast, visit leadercast.com. Welcome to Game Changers with Molly Fletcher where we take you behind the scenes with peak performers to learn what makes them tick and discover how you can apply their lessons to your life. I'm your host, Molly Fletcher. Today's guest has helped guide the careers of visionaries in the music and entertainment industry. A born entrepreneur, Monique Mosley owned her own PR and marketing agency, working with Fortune 500 companies and A-list artists like T.I. and Kanye West. As a script consultant and fashion consultant, Monique lends her industry expertise on the hit TV show Empire. She is also the founder of the Always Believing Foundation, which works to address the health and wellness of youth, is an ambassador for the United Nations Youth Foundation, and a trustee for the Boys and Girls Clubs of America. She's one of the most positive, uplifting people I've been around, and I can't wait to welcome her to the show. We talk about how to be your own boss, her entrepreneurial spirit, and what inspires her to give back. You can follow Monique on Twitter at Monique underscore Mosley underscore. Monique Mosley, it is um, absolutely awesome to have you on. I can't thank you enough. Uh, You know, you and I have had the opportunity to share uh, time together as board members of the Boys and Girls Clubs of America. And and, uh, it's been just an honor and a pleasure to get to know to get to know you. And so thank you for doing this. I appreciate it. No, thank you, Molly. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. So I was watching an interview you did where you were talking about how you used to make your little sister be your secretary (laughs) when you were little and you were the business owner and she was the secretary secretary. You know, how, how do you think you got that mentality, you know, so young, clearly you just, a a, a, an inherent leader, you know, even though my mother and and father uh, worked, you know, for other people, They also both were entrepreneurs themselves. And so I just always looked up to my mom as such a really strong woman. And I just remember being a little girl and going in her closet. I mean, I was a tiny little thing and pulling her clothes out and tying rubber bands around them and dressing up for my office. (laughs) And my sister hated to uh, do her chores because she liked to be outside. And I actually liked to always be inside doing business stuff. So we would exchange. I would tell her, if you're my secretary for an hour, then I'll do your, I'll do your chores. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And so you'd give her, uh, what kind of things did she do for you as your, uh, secretary? She would take, so I would always pretend like I was speaking to all my employees or I was speaking at an event and she would, we would make these makeshift desks and she would sit there and take my notes or write down the things that I needed her to write down. And she would put everything in files for me. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> That is awesome. That is cool. So you, you know, I I just always knew as a child that I wanted to be, I wanted to have my own business and I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Sure. And that you wanted to lead. Yeah. Um, Which is, which is awesome. And you have, you know, you owned your own agency working with some really big companies and, and really sort of A-list artists. Um, Yes, I did. You know, who were some of the people that you worked with and what are some of the things that you've learned from them. This podcast is, is about game changers, right? So it's about people that do things a little bit differently. And because of that, they make an impact, a really awesome impact on people in their lives and the people that they serve. Well, you know, straight from college, um, I got a really great job as an executive at USA Today. And um, when I started seeing the need to kind of merge and, and the kind of the entertainment world, which I was always in love with because I've always loved music and I used to dance and I knew a lot of these people 
and between corporate America, there was just like something missing as far as how do they communicate, how do they both sides get what they need. I saw that opportunity and I started working with artists like Kanye and T.I. and of course Timbaland, you know. So I started doing these things for the, my corporate clients and then it kind of just started merging me naturally over to getting these clients. Wow, wow. And what were some of the kinds of things that you did for some of the musicians that you supported? Um, when I first started, what I was solely focusing on was um, finding partners, redefining, so from an artist perspective or a talent perspective, and even an athlete, because I worked with athletes as well, I would find out and do some research on what their brand was and what their, what their audience saw them as, and then I would take the brands and look and see who, what, if any of them matched as far as what their values were, kind of what their missions were, and see if there was a place for the two to partner. Wow. Well, that's cool. I mean, one of the things that I often talk about when I speak is sort of how do we get in the heads and the hearts of the people that we want to support and serve? You know, how do we really get in their world so that we can serve them even better? It sounds like you did that. I, you know, it was, it, was a, it was a great learning experience. It was a lot of fun. And what it also made me realize is that it was great to work for a number one company, and I learned a lot of number one ways, but it was time for me to kind of take it on, onto myself and, and recreate that for myself. Well, yeah, and you worked on the TV show Empire. Um, wh why, why do you think that show has been so incredibly successful? I, it's, it's historical from a lot of different perspectives. First of all, to be a majority-led, you know, cast that's all African American on the on Fox Network was just a statement all in itself, right? Right. Sure. Um, sure. And then you have all of the talent that exists on there, and it was a chance for a side of the music industry, um, even though it's from a dramatic perspective and it's a storyline, but it was also an opportunity. Uh, to kind of get inside of the day-to-day -day activity of a, a record label, of a family involved in the music industry, and also from an artist's perspective. Right, right. Which, which uh, you know, you have done so... I mean, it's just remarkable what that show has done and the impact that it's made. And yeah, how, they just renewed for a fourth unbelievable. season, so I'm really happy. Oh, my God. And are you still involved with it, Monique? No, you know, it, I, I spent over two seasons with them, um, being so hands-on, being on set every day, and I was in Chicago for two, over two years. And so I kind of needed to, it, it was doing it, everything it needed to do, and I kind of just needed to start something new and focus on something new. Sure, sure, and you live in Miami, so right. Chicago <laughs> winners didn't really jive well with you, I bet, girl. Well, growing up in New Jersey, I actually like seeing the All seasons right. change. All <laughs> right, okay, all right, that's good. Who, who were some of the influences on your career, right? I mean, you've been around some pretty incredible people, um, and I'm sure they've influenced you in some pretty incredible ways. Tell me a little bit about so, that. You know, the beautiful thing is that anytime I got to be around, whether it was an artist himself or an actual, you know, uh, an entrepreneur or an executive, I always tried to see one thing at minimum that I could actually walk away from learning. I, I think learning should never stop, regardless of your successes, regardless of what we think we know. Exactly. You know, that process of learning, um, you should always try to go in a situation like, what can I take away from this? Sure. And, you know, I've been able to be around amazing women, which is just a strong women who are professional, who are there to do. And I can honestly say that I've had some great mentors like Adrian Arsh and, you know, um, Santa Hamra, you know, from Empire, like just an amazing, amazing Christina Norman, who used to be the CEO of, of MTV. You know, wow. these women have taken the time to kind of feed into myself and other people as well. And I think that's, it's really important. Sure. And so you've leaned on them over the years and how does that relationship work? Right. I mean, so we have a lot of people that listen to our podcast, young and old, right? Um, people that are inside of organizations, people that want to maybe start their own businesses, and people that certainly, I believe, that are listening to this want to continue to learn. How right. did you structure those mentorship relationships, and what advice do you have for people that, that, that want to learn from others as it relates to sort of how to do that? You know, when I was growing up, my mother taught me something really important. First of all, I was never allowed to leave the house, even as a little girl, not kind of put together. My mother would always say, you never know who you're going to meet 
and if you have an opportunity to talk to somebody, what it can do. So I, I always had to be prepared leaving our house. Wow. Um, even as a young lady. And I think that it's always good to know who you're talking to and be able to not be afraid to tell them if you need some help on something. I think that we've been trained, even from a scholastic perspective, that there's only one number one. We're in competition with everybody. But when you kind of take that out of your mind, you realize that everyone can help from a different perspective. We all have something to offer and there's always something to walk away with. Sure. No, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, I think that if we, if we wake up every day and are curious all day long, all the time with everybody that we encounter, that, I mean, we could learn something from the person checking us out at Publix, right? Or the grocery store mm-hmm. or the nail salon, or, I mean, it, it's just, if we stay curious and constantly eager to learn, you know, we can really do some special things. So, that's neat to hear you to hear you say that. So what? what you know, did... I, 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 I find a lot of strength in, in, the, in another thing my mother taught us. You always put yourself around people you aspire to be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so that has always been a really big goal of mine and something I try to live by. I place myself around people who I feel like I want to be like or if I'm one day, hopefully when I grow up, <laughs> that, I, that I can really aspire to be. And that's a really important thing. The company you keep is really important. Oh, it sure is. And, and you know, speaking of, I'll share this, that, you know, when Monique comes to our Boys and Girls Clubs meeting, I mean, it is true. She is always looking pretty awesome, pretty perfect. <laughs> so you. your mom taught you well, and you're still doing it, girl. <laughs> I need you. you to help me. I need you to help me. <laughs> What? It is a passion and love of I mine, love for it. sure. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, you're good at it. What, what advice, you know, do you have to young entrepreneurs? I mean, you've been around so many. You're one yourself. What advice do you, you have? You know, as an angel investor, it's one of the beautiful things that I get to see with so many young entrepreneurs who are just starting up. The, the thing that always makes me invest in a company is not just only the idea. It's also the actual founder themselves. It's how they present themselves. Are they believing in themselves? You can never give up, never. Even sure. when it looks like you have to, you just have to find a different way to just never give up and to always believe in yourself. Right. No. Oh, my gosh. Right. Well, because you're going to run into roadblocks, right? Any startup. Absolutely. 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 Yeah, no question. We had the opportunity to interview Vern Harnish, who really wakes up. I mean, he leads an organization called Gazelles, and that's what they do. They Mm-hmm. They have done incredible things for, for entrepreneurs. You know, it's, it's actually um, Black Tech Weekend this weekend, and I was able to see some amazing young entrepreneurs here in Miami, and they came from all over the place, actually. And that spirit of, of just being able to go out here and, and get what you believe in and, and dream it is – dreaming is good. Absolutely. Sure. You know, no, I, I yeah. think that – we should never kill that spirit of people aspiring and dreaming and feeling like they can accomplish the, the things that people feel like we can't accomplish. Right, right. No question. Well, you know, what, you talked about being an angel investor in so many different entrepreneurial ventures. What, what do you know, when, when do you know, right, that, that it's a project that you want to dig into, that you want to put not only your time but also your resources against? Again, I, when it's such, at a, such a space as when I get involved, which is the early, early stages, um, it's more about the team, the founder, the CEO. Uh, it's about the idea as well. You know, is it something realistic um, from a perspective of patents and trademarks and things like that? Um, but I feel like what guides me the most is I go with my heart, and that, that's just a really honest answer. Sure. I go with my heart on who I really think is believing in themselves. And even if they get discouraged, distracted, will they be able to fight through it? Right, right, right. Because there's so many great ideas out here. And, you know, we have to ask why are so many great ideas not able to come to fruition? And sometimes it's through self-defeat, you know, just different things. But the, the founder has a lot to do with it, for sure. Do you do, uh, do you invest in a lot of women organizations, female yeah, owned so and run? My, the, the, the company that myself and my business partner own, Erica, 
we have we specialize in minority and female companies. Neat. Neat. Yeah. Wow. Not that we haven't invested in sure. you know, different ones, but our focus is definitely that. Wow. Because what we found is that a lot of people don't get that opportunity to even go and pitch these companies. Right. Absolutely. Sure. No question. Well, that's an incredibly unique opportunity for them, right, to get in front of you and it sounds like Erica and and share their story. It's like a mini little Shark Tank program you got going in that girl. Yes, mm-hmm, I love absolutely. It. I love it. Yes. So you and even the companies that we don't financially invest in, we mm-hmm. still invest our time in and try to get them to a place where they can now be financially invested in. Wow. So we don't we don't just offer financial help. We offer intellectual help. We offer our time. We do classes online. You know, we do a lot of things to help these entrepreneurs kind of get guided in the right direction. Wow. That is uh, it's so needed and so wonderful. You, you know, the, the thing with life is that once you're able, we become successful to give back. And I think if you lose that motto, you kind of don't know your purpose anymore because if you're afforded the opportunity to be able to give back, you really should. You know, I love that line, right? We become successful so that we can give back. And boy, I couldn't agree with that more. I mean, and we certainly need to love what we wake up and do every day. But when it becomes a vehicle to allow us to give back, that to me is is really often what rolls up into most people's purpose. And I, I like for, you know, I always tell the young entrepreneurs, when you make it, not if you make it, when you make it, never forget this process. Never forget the help that you got. So that once you are able to change your life, you can help change someone else's. Wow. God, that's powerful. That's awesome. You know, one of the things that when I look at your bio and look at what you've done and I've had the opportunity to get to know you, what what are some of the things that you're most proud of? You know, because you've done some amazing things. I think, first of all, just being a mother, first of all. Sure. I think that it it breeds you up a little differently as far as being able to be a leader and strength and things like that and just the resistance and resilience that you get as a mother. Um, But from a professional perspective, I think what I take the most pride in is being able to have been blessed enough to take the risk of being the, the person who's done something first. Wow. Tell me about some of the things that you've done. So that you've done first, right? And how that went and what you learned. So, you know, we were the first label to sign, you know, um, rock artists, you know, um, that was an African-American label. Wow. You know, and who, so that was a really big deal. And and we take a lot of pride in, again, Empire was a first. It it was a, a far stretch and a lot of it was a lot of frustration and a lot of not knowing if it if it was going to be received well um, to that type of audience, you know. So those are the things that just want to from the even down to the smallest thing of doing a press kit that no one else had done before. Wow. Just the, right. You know, whether right. it's a small thing or a big thing, to me it's more about okay, can we make some history? Sure. As well. Sure. Well, and and pitching shows to networks, I don't know a lot about, clearly nothing close to what you know, but I know that is a very, very, boy, is that a difficult process. Yes. (laughs) I mean, I'm sure, I mean, that's a huge get. And then to have it continue to be renewed and for it to be so successful, it's unbelievable. It's awesome. Yeah, I mean, they have some great writers just some great executive producers. I mean, Lee Daniels and Danny Strong and Eileen Shaken, they're just amazing people. Sure, sure. Well, you know, um, I, I want to bring this back a little bit to Boys and Girls Clubs because, you know, we both have the opportunity to serve them and the organization and most importantly those incredible children that, that come through those blue doors each and every day all over the, all over the country. Um, and, and I know you're involved and serve and give back to so many different organizations. What are some of the other organizations that you're involved with and, and what has inspired you to be involved with, with different ones? One that's really close to my heart is here in Miami. It's called the Miami bridge. It's, it's one of the oldest, uh, not-for-profits here that serve at-risk youth. 
Um, and it's the only uh, at-risk youth shelter. They have two locations that actually are within the Miami area with, for like three hours. Wow. So getting to work with these young children, getting to see smiles on their face and inspire them. And, it, you know, Molly, something as simple as a hug we take for granted, right? No question. And to be able to give a, a child a hug who said, I've never had a hug before. Oh, gosh. Yeah. You know, is just. It's something that I I just wish children never had to go through, but it is a reality. Sure, sure. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I know when I've gone to clubs um, before and I've seen, you know, these kids and, I mean, and you hear their stories and it it is, uh, it's absolutely at times gut-wrenching and all you want to do is, I mean, you just want to bring them home, right? But what you realize is they love the world that they're in. And right. what Boys and Girls Clubs do, what does so well, right, is they, they, they show them another way. And I know that when you were 12, you walked into a Boys and Girls Club, right, in Dayton? Yes, I did. Tell mm-hmm. me about that. So um, I was fortunate enough that I didn't have to go, but I wanted to go. And my first time there with one of my friends who I danced with, uh, I was like, wow, this is a great experience. So we were able to negotiate using some of their space for rehearsals and, and practices. And in exchange, we would help with the younger children. Okay. So it was not just an opportunity for us to learn and be around great people, but it was also an opportunity to teach us that we're supposed to give back as well. Wow. Right. Absolutely. You know, um, switching gears a minute, right, because I know our listeners would love to hear um, some of, and I don't know if you have any really cool kind of amazing moments or stories about a T.I. or a Kanye West. You know, everybody probably wonders about their world and what it's like and it may be the, the, your relationship with them and things that you've seen them do, opportunities you've seen them embrace, turn down. Um, maybe something you've never shared before, but that would be really, really cool. I know people would dig so that. So something that I can share because, you know, there is this, this beautiful thing about having being able to witness the personal aspect of the talent that everyone, you know, has embraced and loves and supports as fans. But from my perspective, there's always, there's always a trust thing as well. So, but one thing I can say is that Taraji P. Henson – is hands down one of the most beautiful women that I've been able to enjoy professionally and personally. She just has a beautiful spirit. I mean, I remember I was so drained um, from being on set every day, being away from my family, and she wasn't filming that day. And she called me, and I was working, and she said, you know what, come meet me for lunch. And I was like, I can't. And she said, no, come meet me for lunch. And she made me take that break that I needed wow. just for, some, for some girl time. Sure. And, and those are the beautiful things that, you know, people don't get to experience because, you know, they're people as well. They're humans. And when when you can see them in a human light and not just for their professional career, it's just a beautiful experience. Sure. Well, but and you she, see she defines sisterhood in a, just a beautiful, really? beautiful way. Really? Yes, absolutely. Well, and when you sit at a lunch like that and you, you know, to your point, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, I, when I worked with athletes. You would see guys, for example, going through so much off the field, and then they would get to the mound and they would throw, you know, 80 pitches and 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 close out a game in you know seven innings and or you know pitch seven innings and then step out with with having thrown an incredible game. When I'm sitting there watching, knowing all the other stuff that they have on their plate, and mm-hmm. you know, and that's what these guys and gals want, right? Is they they they're human beings. And yeah, they happen to be really, really special at what they do. But at the end of the day, their their um, challenges, you know, may be a little bit different than ours. But but the truth is, oftentimes they're so similar as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, I've I've seen artists go from you know, I mean, some of our schedule would be we started at five o'clock in the morning. We were at radio all morning. Then we went to afternoon radio. Then we went to rehearsals. And at, even at the end of their day, after their after party or whatever they have to show up to, it's almost been 24 hours now, and they'll still sign that autograph. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. And I'm sure you were careful who you picked. You picked to work with people that were that kind of person, I bet. 
Absolutely, absolutely. That's it awesome. is really important. Again, it just falls back to putting yourself around like-minded people. No question. That's right. Well, and and speaking of you, you're the founder of Always Believing Foundation, which works at, you know to address health and wellness and youth. Um, how can people find out more about that and support? that mission of yours they can go to always believing.com it, we're also on instagram and twitter as always believing um and you know it's just it's really dear to my heart for personal reasons and it, it really you know childhood obesity is it just affects so many people so many children and it doesn't just affect their health it also affects their mental health wellness it just affects so many things okay so one word to describe yourself Blessed. Childhood idol. My mom. <laughs> What's your biggest fear? Complacence. Being complacent. Favorite book? The Bible. Favorite place to travel? An island. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite social media channel? Uh, Instagram. Hidden talent? Dance. Best advice you've ever received? Be yourself. Wow. What is? Um, what was your first job? babysitting what is one thing people don't know about you i raised my two youngest sisters wow wow that's a big one one (laughs) yeah (laughs) what is your life motto you give what you get nice so the last one is what is your more actually i have a couple more what is your morning routine i get up at five and i work out jeez and then what no coffee before the workout, girl? No, and then I and then I cook breakfast for the kids and I take them to school. <laughs> <laughs> what is your biggest inspiration? Ooh, I'd have to say my family. Mm. And what advice would you give your younger self? Don't be so hard on yourself. Be gentle on yourself. I love it. <laughs> but Monique, thank you so much for taking a minute. I am so, no, so grateful. thank you, Molly. And if I could just leave with saying just, one thing it would be especially directed towards women to support each other and to really really look forward to meeting another woman and seeing how you can help her and how she can she can be of 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 benefit to you as well We, you know as women and as entrepreneurs we have to support each other amen oh man i love that it's so true imagine how cool it would be if if women all over the world supported each other right and and we made sure we were never competing, but rather trying to support absolutely, one another. Yeah. Absolutely. No question. That would be a, uh, that would be a game changer. We are a very powerful people as women. You got and it. We just need to, we need to support each other. No question. Well, and you did that today by, by helping me here. And, um, and you as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, Monique, you are the best. And I know I no, get to see you, you soon. You as well, me, Molly. Thank you so much. Thanks as always for listening. And if you missed an episode, you can listen to previous episodes on iTunes or on mollyfletcher.com. Until next time, stay curious and be a game changer.